Hey guys, welcome back to Chris Cook in Nashville. Yes, hello Melody. I'm sitting on the floor with my puppy dog. We are getting ready to go cook dinner, aren't we? Yes. We're getting ready to go cook dinner, guys. We are going to do the Carnivarbonaro, the carnivore carbonara pasta. I hope you guys are really ready for this one because it's so good. Look, even Mel's excited about it. Yeah, that's my girl. That's her. Yeah, so we're going to go make some Carnivarbonara tonight. Um, we're going to have it for dinner. So I'm going to show you guys the ingredients we need and the process. I'm actually going to show you two different versions of it. We're going to do the just sort of casual weeknight version, and then we're going to do the chefy version if you want to be a real crazy foodie and do something really cool with your carvin carnivore carbonara. It takes a little practice to say that. Carnivarbonara coming your way right here on Chris Cook in Nashville. Let's go get in the kitchen and have some fun. All right, folks, here's all of our ingredients that we are going to need today to make this pasta. These right here are for the pasta. These are actually for the sauce, so I'm going to kind of slide those out of the way, and I'll talk with you about what those are in a little while. So I've got five eggs here. I'm going to separate these because we're going to use the yolks and not the whites today. So if you've been using my other recipes with lots of whites and you have yolks left over, here you go. We're going to use about a tablespoon of cream. Uh, the cream is optional, but that one tablespoon of cream really does make it nice, so I recommend it. We've got a block of cream cheese that is uh, standard size. We have a little bit of grated Parmesan cheese. You can use any kind of Parmesan you want. Both of the Parmesan and the cream are optional, but they're both really nice. We have beef gelatin powder. You can use any kind of gelatin, just unflavored. We have dried egg whites or egg white powder, and we have pork rind crumbs. We're going to put this all together, and we're going to make some pasta. So our first step is we need to separate out our eggs because we're going to use the yolks. So again, if you've done any of my egg white recipes and you have yolks left over, this is a great way to use those up. Once I have my yolks in there, I'm going to take and soften my cream cheese in the microwave for about a minute. I'm going to use a mixer and we're going to need a spatula as well because we're going to get this really well blended up. So here's my soft cream cheese. You can see as I'm stirring it around, it is really soft. You want to make sure it's not too hot. We're not going to try to cook the eggs but just make sure it's really nice and soft. We're gonna add that in with the eggs. You can just add it right on top of the egg yolks here, and we're gonna get this really well incorporated and mixed up. So I'm using the whisk attachment on my mixer. That's what I find works the best for this, but any mixer that does a good job mixing this up, you can, you can use. We're gonna get that really well mixed, and you can see it's gonna be a nice pale yellow, consistent color all the way through. Then we're going to go ahead and add in our dry ingredients. So this is about a teaspoon of Parmesan cheese. Totally optional, but it is really nice. We have two tablespoons of the pork rind crumbs. These are really, really important. There's probably other meat flours you could also use. And then we're going to do beef gelatin powder. That's about two teaspoons or so of that. And I am just kind of eyeballing these. But we're going to take those three and I'm going to mix these into this mixture really, really well. I've got it on low. I'm just going to mix it up, make sure it's all incorporated really well. And then we can go ahead and add in our additional stuff. So I'm going to turn this up on high and kind of whip this in just to make sure it's really, really well incorporated. And there's our mixture. Now we're going to add in a little bit of heavy cream. Again, this is optional, but it's really nice. It's only about a tablespoon, but that little bit of liquid dairy fat in there, it just seems to make these a little nicer on the texture. So I'm just going to incorporate that really well up on high. And then we can go ahead and get to adding the egg white powder. This is the only part of the steps of this process that you need to be a little careful. We're going to do it one spoon at a time. We're going to add a total of four tablespoons, but you've probably seen me do this before. We're just going to go one tablespoon at a time, mix it in really well, first on low, then on high. And then we do a second tablespoon, and we're going to do this for the third and fourth tablespoon. Now, I'm doing this because if you've seen my recipes where I do this before, we just want to make sure we don't have clumps and lumps of the egg white powder. So just make sure to get all four of those tablespoons really well incorporated and turn it up on high to make sure they are fully beaten in. Now, when you get done with this, you can see the texture that that egg white powder is going to create. It's this thick pasty texture. That's what's going to let us work with this properly so that when we go to turn this into pasta, we don't have to deal with a runny mess. 
Okay, I have two little silicone trays here. You can do this on parchment paper. I find these to be a little bit easier to spread. Um, that's just why I like silicone, but you can use whatever you've got. This is just lard. You just want to grease these really, really well because if they are not well greased, these, uh, these noodles might stick just a little bit. And uh, you really want to make sure that these are going to release easily. So you can see I'm really scrubbing it in and I'm really getting the edges there. That's really important. You want to make sure to get all of the little corners if you're using these. If you're using parchment paper, it's probably not going to be as much of a deal. It's going to be a lot easier to peel off. But uh, I just find the silicone works a little bit better. So that's why I'm using those. So I've got those really well greased. Now I'm just going to take the batter and I'm going to split it between these two. You can play around with this depending on the size of sheets you're using based on how many you need, but I'm going to spread it on here with these angled spatulas. And if you don't have one of these, you don't have to, but man, are these helpful. They make this so much easier to spread something like this. And all I'm going to do is take this mixture and I'm going to spread it across here, just like icing a cake, and I'm going to do it to the thickness of my pasta that I want. So if you want really thin pasta, Take the time to work on it and spread it a little thinner. If you like your pasta thicker or if you're doing something like a lasagna noodle, you can spread this and leave it a little bit thicker when you bake it. So this is kind of where you get to decide what type of pasta you're going to be making based on the thickness. And you can see I'm just kind of spreading it all around. Every time there's a spot that looks like it's a little high, I spread it flatter. If there's an empty spot, I can wipe it off with my finger, fill that back in. You're just gonna spread this as evenly as you can across your entire uh, your entire silicone mat. So I'm doing these big sweeping strokes here at the end just to kind of smooth off the top without using too much pressure, just so that we have a nice smooth surface. I do it one direction and then I turn 90 degrees and I do it the other direction. Just kind of helps smooth everything out. And then if there's any little empty spots, I can go back and fill those in with that last little bit off of the spatula and just try to kind of paint that in there, okay? So we're gonna do this for both of these pans, and that's going to give us our noodle batter all spread out. Once they are done, these are gonna go in a 325 degree oven for 15 minutes, okay? So I'm gonna take them over here, I'm gonna drop them into the oven, and these don't take very long to cook. One of the reasons that we spread it thin like pasta like this is so that it cooks quickly without getting too brittle and dry. And after about 15 minutes, we're going to pull them back out. And you can see this is going to start to happen as the shape of it changes based on the humidity change inside of it. It starts to lift at the edges and curl. That's perfect. You can tell it's cooked because it's become one solid sheet of pasta and we know that it's done. That's also why greasing those uh, containers or the, the silicone mats you're putting it on, that's why it's so helpful because look at this gorgeous pasta sheet, carnivore pasta sheet. You can just see sort of the texture on this and how good this is going to be. It's gonna be fantastic. So then we're gonna take one of these pasta sheets and these are still warm. You wanna do this while they're still warm. You want them to be cool enough to handle, but still warm. Lay it flat, and the edges can get a little bit dry and brittle. If you don't like that, you can trim them. I don't really worry about it. I don't find it to be a big deal. I'm just going to roll these up. Now, how you want to do this is based on your size of pan, but I'm going to roll it up, and then you can decide how big of noodles do you want. If you want something that looks like fettuccine, cut it wide enough to be fettuccine. If you want something that looks a little more like spaghetti like I'm trying to do, cut it thinner like spaghetti. If you want pappardelle, if you want wide lasagna noodles, you can cut this however you want. Now you can see those little edges, they're a little dry and brittle. I'm not too worried about that. As I continue doing this, you'll see I get really nice noodles out of this. As you get away from that edge, it's not dry anymore and it will cut really, really nicely. So I'm just cutting this into noodles. Once I have it cut, I'm going to just kind of gently with my fingers get them to separate. And then I'm going to take these and put them onto one of those cookie sheets because we're actually going to dehydrate these a little bit to give them a little more of that pasta chew and texture. Okay, so I'm just going to put the rest of these on the cookie sheet. I've just moved a few of those drier pieces over off to the side. You can eat them. You can put them on there. I, a lot of times I'll give them to the dog just as a snack, you know, whatever. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut up the second one the exact same way. And by the time you get done with these, they are starting to get cool. 
um, and you can see it just, it looks like pasta, it handles like pasta, it really holds up well. There's our sheet. This is going to go into the oven now at 250 degrees for another 15 minutes to dehydrate, and we're going to get these looking perfect, and when they come out of the oven, they are going to look like this. Now, they're a little bit curly, and they're kind of dry to the touch. That is absolutely perfect. Okay, this is some pork jowl bacon. I'm going to use this to make my version of the Carnivarbonara. Um, what I need to do is trim that little bit of the skin where the smoky, kind of hard skin part is. So I'm going to trim that off, and then I'm going to cut this up in chunks. If you're using regular bacon, cut it up into chunks however you like it. If you're using guanciale, if you can access guanciale, fantastic. Cut it up in little cubes. We just need this chopped up because what we're going to do is render the fat out of this. We're going to get it crispy without getting it too hard, but we're going to render the fat out of it because that liquid fat is going to be a major part of this recipe. Okay, once it's chopped up, we come over here, we throw all of our chopped up bacon into a skillet, and I am frying this, stirring it around. I'm getting it brown and crispy. You can see all that fat is rendering out. You don't want to get it too crispy, but you do want to get it well cooked. And once it is done and it's getting crispy, you want to pour that and all of that liquid bacon fat into a bowl. Save all of that. Okay, now I have a bowl here with four egg yolks. You can decide based on how many people you're feeding, how many egg yolks you need. And then I have about two-thirds of a cup of a mix of Parmesan cheese and Grana Padano cheese. You can use Pecorino Romano. You can use any of these Italian cheeses you like. I went with the Pecorino and the Grana Padano mixture. That's just what I particularly like. So I'm just going to mix that into those egg yolks. You can add a little water if you need to make it a little thinner, um, but you want kind of a, a pasty mixture there. I'm going to put black pepper in here. Black pepper is optional. If you don't use black pepper, don't worry about it. But if you do use black pepper, it's fantastic in this kind of pasta dish. So I'm just going to grind a bunch of black pepper in there, and we're going to stir this all around. If you're sensitive to the oxalates, you could use white pepper as well. Okay, so there's our mixture. There's the bacon with the fat. Okay, and now we're ready to cook. So I have my pan hot. I'm going to go put the bacon and the fat back into the pan. I have my sauce mixture nearby. And I'm just going to bring this up to temperature. Now I have a little wire strainer because I'm going to need that for the pasta. Okay, so here's my dehydrated pasta. It's been air cooling, just air drying for a couple of hours. And it's been dehydrated. I'm literally just going to drop this into boiling water. Okay, and it's going to take about a minute, maybe two minutes, depending on how much you dehydrated it. But it's going to take about a minute. You're going to see it's going to get soft and it looks a little puffy. See how that changed texture and color a little bit? I've got my bacon and the liquid fat. It's nice and hot. So I'm going to take the pasta right out of the pasta water, put it into the bacon and the bacon fat, just like you would with any regular pasta. We're going to stir that around. You want to get all of that pasta coated with that bacon and bacon fat. And then the heat is already turned off. I'm going to take the egg mixture here. I'm going to scrape it in here. Now you want to make sure the heat is off because we're not going to scramble these eggs. But you want to put that in there while there's still some residual heat in the pan and the pasta. And we stir this all around and that's going to help cook the eggs. This is the traditional method of making a carbonara. Kind of toss it through. If you need a little bit of extra pasta water, you can always take a spoon and put a little bit of extra water in there like I did here. Just makes it a little creamier. Stir that around and get the right texture, and that is going to create our carbonara pasta in the traditional way. This is kind of a very simple, straightforward way. Now let's do the chefy way. Same ingredients. We have a bowl we're going to put over our boiling water, okay? And then we have four egg yolks and a whisk. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these egg yolks in here. This is a double boiler method or a bain marie. I'm going to put that in there, and then we're going to be able to add our bacon with the bacon fat and our cheese. So I'm going to take the egg yolks, put them into the double boiler, and I'm going to start whisking them. Now, when you do this, you cannot walk away. This is a little more of a complicated method. You need to do this consistently. Keep whisking and whisking and whisking and don't stop. You can see it's starting to turn a lighter yellow color. It's getting thicker. It's starting to cook. Once you get this lemony yellow color, we're going to slowly drizzle that liquid fat from the bacon in here. And this is essentially like making a hollandaise sauce. So we're going to drizzle that bacon fat in there and you have to whisk and whisk and whisk because we're creating an emulsification between that yolk and that fat. It's going to be much richer 
and more whipped tasting. So same ingredients, but you're going to get a completely different experience from eating it. It's just kind of fun and fancy if you want to do it this way. Okay, once I've got most of that bacon fat in there, I can go ahead and add the cheese and I'll crack some fresh pepper in there and I'll throw in the bacon and whatever little bit of bacon fat is still left. Mix that all together. If this starts to get too thick when you put that cheese in there, take some of that pasta water, add it in there. Now, because this is so fatty, I'm actually gonna put in a little bit of optional lemon juice. You don't have to do that. I put in maybe a half a teaspoon, it just brightens it up. And then I add a little of the pasta water and you can see you get this gorgeous, creamy sauce, okay? So I basically got the carbonara sauce done. I had to grab an uh, oven mitt because the bowl was getting hot, that's fine. And so I'm just gonna take that off there, put the pasta in, the pasta is boiling. I put the sauce back over top of it to warm it. And same thing, pasta goes into the sauce and then we're just going to use some tongs, toss this around, plate it up and guys, Look at this carbonara. This is absolutely fantastic. This is such an amazing dish. So here's our traditional, and here is our chefy version. You can see they look very similar. There's a little lighter color on the chefy version because it's a little lighter. And let's just have a moment of appreciation for the beautiful sight of these two different kinds of carbonara. So there's your chefy version right there in front. And then there's the traditional. All right, guys, there you have it. That is how we do the Carnivarbonara. I know a bunch of you have been really excited about this one, looking forward to it. So um, we're gonna be having this for dinner tonight. And my brother-in-law, Tristan, is here. My my big my big little brother-in-law. So, I'm here. I show that. Yes. Uh, so Tristan actually knows a lot about food. You have a you have a history working with food, yeah. I do. Um, I've been in the restaurant industry for about 10 years as a manager. I was a chef for a short time, and I'm also just, I love food uh, since I was born. So I would say I know a thing or two. I would say he best. does as well, yes. I would say he's um, maybe next to me, probably the best palate that I know. Mm. So, That's a compliment. Yeah, That's a compliment. yeah, and honestly, he can give me a, a run for my money. So. I try. Yeah, yeah. He, he knows his way around the kitchen as well. So, um, so I have the two different types, which you guys know what they are. Tristan actually doesn't. He doesn't know what the difference is between these two. One's not necessarily better than the other. It's just two kind of different ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just curious to see what he says. So we're going to have him live test it for you guys. He's never had this recipe that I do. And we're just going to see what he thinks and see if he can tell you what it's like and what the differences are. So help okay. yourself. Uh, first thing, they both look like pasta. Yeah. I can't, if you would have told me that these are not real noodles or, or wheat noodles, whatever you want to call them, mm. I would never be able to, to tell the difference. And it twirls like pasta. It does. It has good, it holds on to the fork well. Yeah. Look at that bite, guys. That's that's good. <laughs> it smells like it too. Like right. nothing, nothing's different so far. It's got really good chew. Mmm. It's creamy. It's salty. It has that um that that smokiness from yeah. Yeah, from that pork gel. Mm hmm Yeah. Now guys, traditionally, you know, guanciale would not have a smoke mm -hmm. to it, but honestly, I really like the smoke because it's hard to right. one chale. Mm -hmm. So we're used to just, you know, smoked bacon and stuff here in America. So And this is it's it is fantastic. Was I supposed to try the other one? Go, I just got another just, one. Yeah, just just help oh. yourself. Okay, so I'd That's say good. that one is a this winner. Is good. That is a winner for Creamy. sure. Mm, okay, so, so this one. This one, to see if there's any differences or which okay. one you prefer. Like I said, one's not right or wrong. They're just, just two kind of different things and just so people can kind of understand the difference between the them. Difference okay. between them. Mm. And this one's lighter. Flavor profile. Texture is still really on point. Mm -hmm. mm. I don't know if it's just the bite difference, but that pork gal comes out so much more in the second one. Yep. Um, this is... <clears throat> Out of the two, depends on the mood. If I've already had like, you know, a really heavy lunch, this may be too much for me. This is thicker, this is denser, this is rich. Right. I love this. Right. But like, if I'm looking to have this like early, early day, midday dinner, mm -hmm. I'm hitting this up every time. Awesome. Cool. So what Tristan doesn't know about what we did, what we did here. Mm -hmm. So this one, which you know, again, it's not necessarily one's better than another. They're very, very different, though, in the outcome. So this one is a traditional way of making carbonara. 
This mm. is taking the pasta straight from the pasta water. You saw we put it on top of the bacon and the bacon fat, brought a little bit of the water with it. Mm -hmm. And then you pour the egg yolk and the cheese mixture right on top. Okay. You've already turned the heat off and you just toss it with a little bit of that water. It makes an emulsification and um, you get that creamy sauce. So that's why this one mm -hmm. is kind of that balanced sort of a thing. Yeah, that's a traditional absolutely. way of making carbonara. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's mom's carbonara. That makes sense. That makes in, sense. In Italy, yeah. that is what you have when mom's making you dinner, right? Or at least as close as I can get to making this. Italian people, please don't yell at me. I'm doing the best I can here. No, I'm not I'll yell at them. I find it funny, but don't do it. That's right. But do so it. this one is a much more chefy approach. Okay. So what I did with this one is I took the exact, it's the exact same recipe, same ingredients, everything. This one, you guys yeah. saw, we put it in a bain-marie over mm -hmm. boiling water, okay. and you cook the egg yolks very gradually while whisking, exactly mm -hmm. like you would a hollandaise sauce. Yes. Okay. And then you add the bacon fat in there to create the hollandaise oh. sauce, then you add the cheese and the pepper, and then you add the bacon, and you add a little bit of water, and you create the sauce separate. Yes. And then you take the water, that, or the mm -hmm. pasta that has been boiled mm -hmm. out of the water, dump it in, and you toss it. Mm -hmm. And so this is a much chefier, that's why you're yes. getting that richness. Mm -hmm. Because it's gotten that egg yolk that's been whipped and you got yes. all that fat whipped into it. And what it does is it changes your taste perception of it. 100%. I feel like, so you, it sounds like you get more control over the consistency of your sauce here yes. than you do here. Yes. And for me, richness is like key. So I right. love that idea. But this, both are equally good. Yeah. But that I love. Yeah. This one is like, if you guys are going to do this pasta recipe, you're going to have it, say, in the freezer, maybe, like in portions that you mm. can just throw it in the boiling water. This is a, we're home late, but we want some carbonara or some other kind of pasta, you know, that kind of a thing. This would be the technique I would use to make carbonara, like, on the fly. Because as long as you've got the bacon hot, you can boil the pasta really quickly. It's probably take three or four minutes when it's frozen. And then you can just throw this together in one pan, mm -hmm. split it up, put something to go on the side, you know, whatever it is you're doing, keto, keto, or carnivore, whatever, put your side to go with it, and you've got dinner. And it wow. only takes a little bit of short time. This, if I was trying to wow somebody, mm -hmm. I would do this because it is a little bit more work, but it also makes the fat, the richness of it is the star. And it's just, it just kind of goes to show why I do the recipes I do and why I'm doing this kind of mm -hmm. stuff, because you can take different methods mm -hmm. of the same ingredients and you can have a completely different perception. And right. once we understand that carnivore and keto and ketovore are no longer boring mm -hmm. because we're taking the same ingredients we know are good for us and we're just figuring out how we as a foodie mm -hmm. elevate it. And you don't have to do it all the time. I wouldn't do yeah. this every night, mm -hmm. but this is a really fun recipe for something special. But so. even if you make these noodles in advance, you pull them out of the freezer, you have such a freedom to make a really good meal very quickly. Yes under whatever your dietary needs are. Yes. And that's incredible. Because yes. Because normally, long process. Yeah. This is a waste time. Absolutely. This, can you tell me I have this ready in like 10 minutes? Yep. I'm gonna have it every night, that's what I'm there gonna do. There you go. Now, the kicker question here is mm -hmm. you are thoroughly enjoying uh, this. We're almost done. This is, this is our dinner tonight. He's already halfway done with his. So, mm -hmm. um, so the kicker question, mm -hmm. if I gave you this, mm -hmm. and I told you this was real pasta, mm -hmm. Even if it's maybe a little different than what you're used to pasta yes. being, would you believe me that it was pasta, or would you think it's something else? Like, would you would you say like, oh no, that's definitely not made out of anything pasta? Mm. So, being real, being honest, definitely it lacks a little bit of the elasticity of pasta. So right. my brain immediately, if you said that's real pasta, would say yeah. be wrong. However. Even if you said that, I would still believe in some way that this is just altered wheat. Right. Would never believe that there's not a single bit of gluten in there. Right. Like a like a different sort of pasta. A different sort of pasta. Yeah, exactly. Something right. modified. But as far as like if you said <clears throat> this is pasta, I change, I'd be like, yeah, they're the absolute right. That's so I don't feel cheated at all having this meal. Yeah. At all. As someone who has a pretty open diet because yeah, yeah, I cook around food all the time. Yeah, he's a standard American diet kind of guy. I am. Works in restaurants, so he, he eats a lot of different yeah. things. Yeah. Clear your show it. It's just so it good. doesn't change it, it I'm eating all the bacon right now. Um, Go for it. This is something that I would suggest, like if you have a dinner party, yeah. if you have like, someone over, you know, and maybe you're trying to entertain someone who doesn't have that same carnivore keto diet that you have, right? And you want to still treat them but not cheat. Yep. This 
this is the meal you want to go for. Yeah, and guys, that's exactly what I'm talking about. You can take stuff like this, you can feed it to people who don't even eat keto and carnivore, mm -hmm. and honestly, like, they may know it's not pasta, they may not know it's not pasta, mm -hmm. they're just going to like it because yep. it tastes very much like pasta. Yeah. Um, and, you know, again, this is why I wanted Tristan to be the one to try it, because like I said, he has a really discerning palate. He knows specifically texture. He's a texture eater big right. time. Mm -hmm. So he really knows texture. So the fact that he doesn't go, oh, that's weird, and spit it back out, mm -hmm. that tells you how good that is. Yes. And the fact that my wife, who absolutely hates egg substitute things, hates, hates them with a passion, mm -hmm. the fact that she loves pasta made like this uh, also goes to show you that it is really, really tasty. So... Yeah. Well, Tristan, thank you so much for trying it. Um, so well. Guys, this is the carnivore pasta recipe. You can put all kinds of sauces on this. This is just my carnivore banana version. Um, it's a lot of fun. I hope you guys really enjoy it. Uh, if you would like to support the channel, you can go down below. My link for the Patreon is down there, and that means you guys get to join the band. I don't know if you've heard that before or not. That's that's. I was trying to figure out what to call the people that like to support me, and I was like, well, I'm a musician and a guitar player. It'd be uh -huh. dumb not to call you guys the band, right? When you're with the band, you get to go backstage in the green room, you get to practice, and we get to do this all together. And we are a family, and we're doing this as a community. So thank you guys so much for watching. My Patreon is down below. I also have a merch shop down there if you want to get some band t-shirts. <laughs> right? The, like the, that's, yeah, you know. Listen, I'm corny and, and just ridiculous. That's mm -hmm. what I do. But you guys can go down there. You can get t-shirts and hats and aprons and cups and all kinds of different things. Just a cool way to support the channel. I'm also going to be opening up YouTube channel memberships mm -hmm. here soon, so you guys can join in on that if you prefer to stay on YouTube and not go to Patreon or you know buy like T-shirts or whatever, um, and you still want to support the channel. I'm going to make sure that's there as well. So, um, and if you guys don't want to do any of that, that's totally cool. Just give me a thumbs up on the video if you like the recipe. Let me know what you guys are going to do with this. What kind of pasta are you looking forward to making? Leave a comment down below telling me that, and share this with people who might really like some pasta but are eating keto, carnivore, ketovore, any other kind of low carb, mm -hmm. or maybe people who honestly have like a gluten allergy. 100%. Like there's all kinds of things that this can be useful for. Yes. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate all of you. I love you guys so much because you just give me a purpose in doing this and it just makes me so happy to get to share these things with you. So we're gonna go have some dinner now. But in the yeah. meantime, Eat your meat, love your life. This is Chris Cook in Nashville and my brother-in-law, Tristan. And we're going to talk to you guys next time. <laughs> He's so excited about the pasta he can't even hang on. I am. I'm still <laughs> eating it. All right. We love you guys. Chris Cook in Nashville. See you guys in the kitchen on the next recipe. <clears throat> the board drop worth it? Yeah. It was great.